Good. This is Ray Bouchard. You listen to the You Need to Know program, and today I'm talking to James Daughtry, and uh, we're going to be talking about his book that he uh, wrote. It's called When I Became a Man. So, James, to give us some history of who you are and how you got to get to the point where you did write the book. Hi, Ray. Uh, thank you for having me on the program. Sure. Well, as a young man, I had a lot of questions about what it meant to be a man, and uh, I went to a men's Bible study for a while, but that men's Bible study broke up, and I still had a lot of unanswered questions. So I went to the Bible bookstore, and I really couldn't find anything available on the subject. That was a number of years ago. Nowadays, there's more material out there. So what I did was I started to just study the Bible on my own and write down verses uh, about what it meant to be a man and the responsibilities of a man. I started putting Bible studies together and teaching men on the subject of biblical manhood. And uh, a few years ago, my book, When I Became a Man, was published. Okay, so now what what prompted you to, other than the the experience that you had in the Bible studies, in fact, you couldn't find something that had a good basic outline on how to help men to discover who they are and how they get there. Uh, what what prompted you to be able to take on the responsibility of writing this book? Well, one of the things I really wanted men to do was to get into the Word of God and study the Word of God. Mm-hmm. There's a, a number of books out there for men, and I think that there's a number of good books, but often they're books that... Uh, talk about biblical principles, and an author talks about his experiences. And what I've tried to do in when I became a man is try to get men to go directly to the Word of God. Uh, uh, each chapter has maybe a page or two introduction, mm-hmm. and then men start looking up verses and, and studying the Word of God. I always say that I could say something that might impact a man, but if God speaks to that man... He's truly going to be impacted. So that was my desire, is to really uh, have a Bible study on uh, biblical manhood. There's really not much material out there as far as Bible study guides. I see. So now, one of the things I noticed about you when I was reading through your synopsis here was that you've been to many different countries, especially Mexico. And how does the cultural differences in these countries affect this teaching? Well, actually, that's a good question. Uh, I recently just returned from Mexico I actually had the opportunity to visit a bookstore. My my book recently came out in Spanish, and one of the bookstores was uh, invited me to to teach a devotional there. And in Mexico and many Latin American countries, there's uh, kind of a, a macho view of of manhood in the culture. Uh, even in our own culture, there's there's a, a somewhat of a macho and kind of mixed up view of manhood. So what I try to do in when I became a man is really not get involved in, in cultural norms, but just go directly to the Word of God and see different responsibilities and principles that God has given in His Word that are really universal to, to all cultures. Mm-hmm. When does a man become a man? Well, a man becomes a man when he becomes what God intended him to be. Mm-hmm. Sometimes uh, there's a misunderstanding when a man becomes a man. Often people have the idea of at 18, well now this young man, this boy is a man, or at 21 he's a man. Uh, Sometimes people think it's a major event in their life. They graduate college and now they're a man. They get their first job. They marry, now they're a man. Well, there's a lot of men that, that are married but that doesn't necessarily make them a man. That doesn't really mean they're fulfilling their role as a man. So it's not about accomplishments. It's not about reaching a certain age. It's about taking up the responsibilities that God has given us in his word. God created man, and he knows what he, he wants and expects for a man. So what we need to do is, is go to his word and see what he says. Often our view of, of what it is to be a man comes from, from society, from what the world is telling us. <laughs> Most men, what they hear on the street is their idea of what it means to be a man. So we need to go to God's Word and, and see what God says. 
what it is to be a man because he created man. So do you find it difficult to offset some of the stigmatism that we pick up from our culture? Right. There's, there's a lot of things in our culture. Um, I was at a, a men's conference a while ago, and a young man came up to me, and he saw my book, When I Became a Man. He said, he said what's that all about? <laughs> and in our culture, there, there's a lot of confusion about what it means to be a man. You hear about men wanting to become women and women wanting to become yeah. men. And I think that at this time right now, it's more important than ever for churches to have teaching on the role of a man and mm-hmm. what it is to be a man. You know, one of the things I've learned in my my counseling stage, things that I do in counseling, is the, to discover that girls really need to have this man influence in their lives. And sometimes it's very difficult to find a, a man that's willing to be a part of a young lady's life. Well, even, you know, fathers don't have that ability or they miss out on those opportunities. How do you deal with that? Well, you know, a few months ago, I had always uh, taught the, the material when I became a man to men's groups. I wrote it specifically for men. Uh, but a, a while back, uh, I actually led for the first time a co-ed group mm-hmm. using the book when I became a man. And a lot of the women in the group said, wow, I, I really enjoyed this study. It helped me to understand men better. Some of them said, I wish my husband was here. Some said, I, I wish my son was here. I, I think we really need to have teaching for both, for, for women also, for, for young ladies that are, 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 are thinking of getting married, that are, are, are dating someone, for them to understand what the role of a man is, what to expect in a godly man so that they could make good decisions on, on dating and marriage. With that in mind, could you give us a brief synopsis of the different chapters in your book? Give us an outline of maybe what, what it's dealing with? Sure. Uh, there's 10 chapters in the book. Uh, the first chapter is titled God and Man. Mm-hmm. And uh, this chapter considers God's creation of man in the book of Genesis. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, we read that God created man in his own image and likeness. Man is unique by this fact. And no, none of the animals or anything were made in the image and likeness of God. In addition, God gave man dominion and authority uh, over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every, every living creature. Therefore, uh, God exalted man above all his creation. Uh, chapter 2 uh, is the perfect man. And I like to joke and say that that chapter is about me, but uh, (laughs) that's definitely not true. The perfect man is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Uh, This chapter examines the life of Jesus Christ and how he lived as a man on earth. Uh, Jesus is portrayed in the Bible for us so we can be like him. So we need to study him Mm -hmm. and study how he behaved as a man. A man in himself, uh, this chapter explores uh, the good and bad character traits of a number of men in the Bible and helps us to evaluate our own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, Chapter 4, Man and Men, uh, this chapter considers a man's relationship with older men and younger men. The principle of older men teaching younger men can be found throughout the Bible. And since older men have been through life's joys and trials, uh, they can share a much fuller perspective on life with, with younger men. Uh, chapter 5 is Man and Women, and this chapter investigates the proper relationships and roles uh, between men and women. It also looks at the importance of uh, the dependence between men and women. Uh, there's five more chapters. I don't know if you had a question on any of those. or No, I just wanted a basic outline of what you're how this thing is laid out. So, one of the things that I've discovered is, you know, I I really do appreciate your book because I'm involved with five different, four different Bible studies for men. So that was very informative as I read through your book and looked at the the scriptures and the outlines and those kind of things. So, I appreciate that. Yeah, I just wanted you to know I appreciate your book. So let me ask you a different question: Are you uh, planning on writing something else in the future? Well, actually, um, I am working on another Bible study guide. It's on Proverbs 31 uh, about the virtuous woman. And again, it would be a similar type of format where it would be for men or women, and they would actually be 
looking at the Bible, looking at the passage, and trying to understand uh, what God is communicating through his word. So I'm hoping to finish that book, but uh, I actually work full-time, and then outside of work, I'm involved in a number of different ministries. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's hard finding the time to be able to, to finish up the book. I'm probably about halfway through on that, and Lord willing, it might be coming out sometime uh, next year. What do you consider to be the greatest need for men in the Christian community? I know we have all kinds of confusion in the in the culture, but as far as the Christian community is concerned, what do you think the greatest need is? Well, I really think one of the most important things, uh, and I've kind of alluded to this a little bit, and I think you could tell I have a real passion for the Bible and, and the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I think one of the most important things is for men to get together uh, in a group, have that fellowship, and, and have a men's Bible study. I go to a lot of churches, and, and they don't have a, a men's ministry or men's Bible study. Uh, some of the churches that I, I go to, they, they have a men's Bible study. I go to the men's Bible study, although uh, it may be some good teaching and encouraging time. Often, even though it's called the men's Bible study, they're not studying the Bible. It's not very common that we study the Bible nowadays. There's so many books out there written by a lot of very gifted and talented authors. And most Bible studies now study a book that's been written by an author that has a lot of good principles from the Bible, and the author shares a lot of great experiences. And I, I thank God for that material. It's, it's useful, and I, I believe there's a place for it. But I would like to see us get back to the Word of God and studying the Word of God. I was actually in a, a Christian bookstore a while ago, and I was looking for Bible study guides, and I couldn't find them. And I, I asked the uh, clerk, I says, where are the Bible study guides? They said they're all the way back in the corner on the bottom shelf. Well, the reason why they put them back in the corner on the bottom shelf is because no one's really buying them. All the stuff that sells you know, fast is put up toward the front of the store. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like to see is a change. I'd like to see all those Bible study guys up at the front of the store. And the first thing that we're reaching for is something to help us explore and understand the Word of God. So that's the desire of my heart, is, is to see men get into the Word of God and, and have a fellowship with other men studying His Word. I think that's very true, and one of the things is that we find a lot of books telling about the Bible and about what's in the Bible, but not really dealing about the Bible itself. And I think you're right. I like the idea that you use Scripture when you're trying to... The Scripture's more important than the synopsis or what's going on before you pick on each one of these chapters, but I think you're right. I think we need to be more involved in our scripture and focusing on helping people to realize that there's a lot to be gained by learning for what, the, what the history of the scriptures have been about. Yes, amen. And I think, I think part of the reason we don't do it as often is uh, there's a lot of men that are a little bit intimidated and, and they, they feel like, well, I, I haven't gone to Bible college. I, how am I going to understand the Bible? Mm -hmm. So I think as we actually have a group and uh, you have men together studying the Bible, they could help each other and encourage each other. And some men may have more knowledge of the Bible and they mm -hmm. could share with some men that maybe have lesser knowledge of the Bible. So I hear you talking about mentoring. Do you advocate that in some of your Bible studies? Yes, definitely. Um, in uh, chapter 5 of my book, I'm sorry, actually chapter 4, Man and Men, mm -hmm. the chapter looks about, it looks at how older men have often um, mentored and, and mm -hmm. taught younger men. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is uh, something very important for young men. Is, is Men are young, a lot of times they're, they have a lot of enthusiasm and excitement, but they don't always have the, the wisdom and, and the life experiences. And I think an older man could definitely could impart wisdom to them. So I, I think that's a great thing. I think we should have that more in our church. Sometimes uh, older men are not always sure how to, to go about doing that. I've seen some Bible studies where they were uh, using uh, When I Became a Man, and it was a mixed group of, of older men and younger men. And a lot of the older men, I don't know if they, they learned a lot from my book. I, I'm sure that over the years God had taught them and they were fulfilling the role of a man. But I don't know if they knew how to explain that really well. But uh, in the Bible study, I saw them speaking up and, and talking about how God had taught them over the years. So uh, definitely I think that we need to have 
older men involved in the lives of, of younger men. So we have a, a bookstore here, but we don't have any of your material in the bookstore. How do we? How would someone go about procuring the materials that you have to offer? Yes, I'm going to be sending you some copies for your bookstore, but uh, if people are listening uh, on the radio and they want to get a copy of the book, obviously one of the best places is Amazon. It's also available uh, at a number of other bookstores. The publisher is Abaddon Books. And if they were to go to Abaddon Books, on the webpage, there's actually a a list of bookstores Mm -hmm. uh, by state that the book is available. So now, how do you spell Abaddon? Abaddon is A-E-I-D-A-N. It's Abaddon Abaddon. Books, right? Dot com? Yes. Okay. And and it's all one word, right? Yes. Okay. (laughs) All right. So, and if they wanted to call, could they call any number that would be able to get a hold of you or one of your publishers or whatever? Actually, if they go to that, uh, the publisher's website, uh, there is a link where they could uh, send an email to the publisher and uh, they could get a hold of me. Um, I do speak at men's conferences and different places. They could uh, contact me through the publisher's website. So have you ever thought about coming to Maine? I'd love to come to Maine. I heard it's beautiful. Uh, I'm in Chicago, so uh, <laughs> it uh, definitely would be nice to get out there. So uh, Lord willing, one day I will. Well, we'd be look forward to seeing you come up here to Maine. So anyways, well, we want to thank you for being a part of what we're trying to do here in the state of Maine is to build families and build relationships and help pe- men especially to take on their responsibility of being a man and learning how to do that in a godly fashion. So is there anything else you'd like to add before we hang up here? Well, Ray, I just uh, appreciate very much the time. Uh, I appreciate your ministry, and I just pray that God will continue to bless uh, your ministry is there. That they would, God would bless uh, the radio program. And just thanks again for having me on the program. I really appreciate having you on here, and we thank you for taking the opportunity, taking the time to share with us. And you've been listening to uh, James Daughtry and Ray Bouchard as we continue here with the program on the You Need to Know program. We thank you for tuning in, and we thank you that you are interested in working in the material that we have been looking at from Jim. So God bless you, James, and thank you for taking the opportunity. Thank you. God bless. Yeah, bye-bye.